dropped in a solid PVA bag next to the swirls. The rod was only in the water an hour and we're playing a fish. And this looks like a nice way to save a blank. And we've got him, yes! That's not a bad fish. Crazy, all that time, nothing, no bites. Just a recast with a solid bag. Five minutes later, it's gone off. And this was just a case of a well-placed PVA bag trap and we saved the black. What's up, carp freaks? So every day, I receive loads of messages off you guys on my social media pages, asking me about various tips and tactics. And the one theme that comes up time and time again is solid PVA bag fishing. So today I have come to East Elf Lakes and I'm going to run through everything you need to know about fishing with solid PVA bags. Now if you're thinking about stopping watching this video, one, why, two, don't, and three, you could win a PVA bundle later on in this video with everything you need to fish solid PVA bags. So keep on watching, but before then, I am going to get the rods out and get the session started. So I've got two rods in the water, both being fished on solid PVA bags. But before I go into the finer details about solid PVA bag fishing, I first of all want to show you my PVA bag essentials. And I've got them all here inside this bucket. So this is the large 17 litre bucket. And in the top, I have one of the bucket inserts. This allows me to keep all my essential items neat, tidy, close to hand. This makes tying up bags much more efficient, I think, by having it nice and organized in this way. So let's take a look at exactly what we've got here. First up, we have the PVA itself. This is a Rapid PVA bag loader. It really does make tying PVA bags much easier, much faster, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. I've got some spare spools of Hooklink. This is a Reflex Camo Braid. I've um, got some spare baiting needles in here some spare leads, three ounce inlines. I have some spare PVA bags, both in the fast melt and the slow melt. I also have a syringe there for injecting liquids into the PVA bag. Then in the bucket itself, I have a bag of really fine powder. This is squid meal, very fine, fishy, squiddy powder. I also have a bottle of Minamino. I mentioned before about the syringes. Well, this is what I like to inject into the PVA bag. And last, but no means least, we have the main ingredient for the PVA bag, and that is these tiny micro halibut pellets. So those are all the PVA essentials. Now let's take a look at closer detail, how exactly we go about using each component and putting a PVA bag together. So my PVA bag rig itself, much like all the rigs I use, really are incredibly simple. So let's tie one up now. The hook link we're using is the Reflex Camo in 25 pound. This is a very supple sinking braid. So we start by forming a small loop at the end to create the hair to attach the bait. And there we have a small loop. Next, we attach the hook bait. Here I'm using a 12 mil washed out pink Carp Freaks pop-up. So the pop-up's threaded on, small boilie stop to secure in place. Then peel off around 10 inches of braid. Next, we want to thread on a small piece of fine hook silicon. So I have a small piece of fine hook silicon here, which I'm going to thread on to a splicing needle and thread that onto the hook link, onto the braid. Next we need our hook, which is a stiff rig beaked in a size five. Thread that onto the braid. Next 
rethread the hook silicon down over the point of the hook and push it all the way on. Careful not to pierce the silicon and just thread the silicon down onto the shank. Next we just tie off with a, a knotless knot, just four or five turns. Then to finish off the hook link, tie an overhand loop at about three and a half inches of braid. So it's a, a double overhand loop. And I'll leave this quite long. So the loop is probably an inch and a half long. And just trim off the tag. So all we need to do now to create our pop-up rig is simply pinch on a split shot, just about five mil above the hook to balance the hook bait. So that is our finished PVA bag setup. Now I'm gonna show you how we go about loading and tying our PVA bags. So here we've got our finished rig. So now we're gonna get it inside a solid PVA bag. Now, if I was doing a recast and I just reeled in the rod and the rig and the lead was all wet, if I was just to put that inside the bag, it would, it would melt the PVA almost instantly. So what we need to do is dry off the rig. And the best way to do that is to dunk it all inside a bag of ground bait. Here I've got a bag of squid meal. So just dunk the lead and the rig in there, give it a shake, make sure everything's completely covered. Just leave that for a few seconds. And when you take it back out, the fine powder will have stuck to everything and dried off any excess moisture. So now we can put it in the rig without it dissolving the PVA. So the PVA bags that we're using are the Rapid PVA system. And this really does make tying solid bags so much easier, so much quicker. And how we do it, we have a loading tool and a locking collar. First of all, we wanna squeeze the loading tool together, thread on the black locking collar. Next, we take a PVA bag. I'm using the 60 by 130 mil PVA bags. It's the second smallest size, and I find this to be the perfect size. It creates a nice little parcel of food when the, when the PVA has dissolved. So we thread the bag onto the bottom of the loader, then remove the black locking collar. Now when we do that, the loading tool expands and traps the PVA bag in place. Then put a layer of pellets in the bag, just about a centimetre, one and a half centimetres of pellets in the bag. Then lower the hook bait down. And using the lead, just tap the hook and the hook bait into them pellets. Next, pull the lead up a bit, then trap the line in a little V that's on the back of the tool. We then add some more pellets so the hook bait is covered. Put the lead back in. That creates a little bit of a, a gap between the hook and the lead. I don't like them sat too close. I'm always a little bit paranoid that the hook could potentially get caught on the swivel, but by having that little bit of a gap, it stops that from happening. Then we fill the bag about halfway full so that the insert on the lead is just poking up to the top of the pellets. Like I say, the, the bag now is about half full. Then start twisting the loader, hold the bag at the bottom, and twist the loader at the top. And as you do that, lick the PVA that's on the loading tool and twist and then push the loader down onto the solid bag. Give a little nip, allow the PVA to set. Now the PVA is set, so we don't need to be using any PVA tape to tie off the bag. That would now withstand a cast. But to make it more aerodynamic, I'm gonna fold the corners of the bag at the bottom. So these little tag, 
tag ends on the corners at the bottom. Just fold them back, quick lick, fold them on the bag, hold for a couple of seconds, and that allows it to set. Again, just push the corners in, pull the little tags, lick, fold, and stick. And there we have it, one finished PVA bag, tightly packed, nice and aerodynamic, will cast a long way, sink really well, and once that PVA dissolves, it's a perfect little parcel of food to trick a carp and hopefully, hopefully entice a bite. It's a hot one. Well, I've been fishing about six hours now and today has gone by really quickly and not a great deal has happened. But I have seen a few fish showing in the past half an hour, a little bit more in open water than where I have been fishing. I have been fishing up against a a uh, overhanging bush but yeah the fish are showing more in open water now which is kind of what kind of what I expected to happen so I've just put on a fresh hook bait and I'm now going to put this inside a solid PVA bag come a little bit off that bush scatter a few boilies around it and hopefully that will bring about a change of fortunes oh bong that's the one Pretty good, wasn't it? Pretty good, wasn't it? <gasps> that was pretty good, wasn't it? Pretty good, wasn't it? Well, good morning. Um, not a great deal has happened since I last spoke to you. It's been a pretty uneventful night. Haven't really received any liners or indications at all, apart from a bream, which I caught just before first light this morning. And on venues where there are lots of bream and, and nuisance species present, I would shy away from using PVA bags, just that little patch of pellet, a little patch of attraction. It is quite vulnerable to the attentions of small species. There aren't that many bream in, in here. There's a few, but not enough to make me think it's, it's not the right tactic. Um, but while we're talking about when is not the right time to use PVA bags, let's talk about the, the best times, the best situations to use solid PVA bags. And I think the first, the first big advantage I feel for using PVA bags is they are such a great way for getting bites without introducing any background feed or without the need to introduce any background feed. So for example, in situations where you know the fish are present already and you know the fish are feeding already and introducing any bait by catapult or spod would, would spook the fish, a well-placed PVA bag trap in these situations is a great way of getting a quick bite. Or also, if you're fishing tight to uh, branches of trees where you have lots of flimsy branches, if you were to cast a rig, there's a chance the hook could get caught on a branch. But if you cast it in, a, in a, a solid bag and the rig's protected, it can often just go through those flimsy branches and get you exactly where you need to be without the risk of it getting caught up. Now, I know a lot of people often tend to think wrongly that PVA bag tactics are for small fish. Well, it's absolutely not the case. In fact, my, I think my three biggest UK carp have all fallen to PVA bag tactics. So my, uh, my PB, 56 pounds plus, uh, that was caught on a solid bag. My PB mirror of over 50 pounds was also caught on a solid bag. And there was one particular venue um, I was fishing in Kent um, a small venue with very pressured, very rig shy carp. And I did so well on that venue by fishing solid PVA bags when everyone else was, was fishing with, with standard tactics. 
and uh, yeah that fish I, I managed to catch my target fish on my third session an ounce under 50 pound again just on a little solid pva bag with a with a disc of pepper army if i remember rightly and uh yeah so my three biggest uk carp have all fallen to solid pva bag tactics so it proves it isn't just a small fish tactic by any means Well, nothing's happening up there at all. I've not seen any signs of feeding fish whatsoever this morning. So I've just reeled in the rods and come for a little walk. And just underneath this tree behind me here in the corner, I did notice a few tail patterns, um, a few boils on the surface. Looks like there could be fish feeding down there. So I've got a PVA bag ready to go in my, in my pocket here. I'm just gonna lower that in place underneath this tree. And hopefully we can turn this session around. So it's been really, really tough going today. The fish just haven't been feeding. There's been odd little patch of bubbles coming up around the lake, but not really feeding with any conviction in any one place. But I had noticed a few swirls coming up in this corner, just underneath this overhanging tree. So I just dropped in a, a solid PVA bag next to the swirls. The rod was only in the water an hour and we're playing a fish. And this looks like a nice way to save a blank. Come on. Come on. There's lots of branches and debris and reed stems and all sorts of things going here. We've sort of got wrapped around a reed now. There he is. Get in the net. Get in the net. And we've got him, yes! Oh, and that's not a bad fish. I think this perfectly illustrates a point I was talking about earlier about situations where there's no need to introduce any background feed. Situations where you can see fish, you can see where they're moving and you don't need to already attract them into the swim. You know they're there. And this was just a case of a well-placed PVA bag trap just on the edge of where I'd seen a fish swirl and then an hour later, it's rattled off and we saved a blank. Well, I think this fish has highlighted two things. The importance of not sitting on your hands when it's not happening, and also the effectiveness of solid PVA bags when used in the right situations. This session was looking like a blank until I saw those swirls going on underneath that big overhanging tree. Dropped in a solid bag, less than an hour later, it rattled off with this nice linear of around 15, maybe 16 pounds, so yeah. Not a bad blank saver at all. Bite. Well, just two minutes ago, I slipped back that mid double linear that I caught from the uh, tree in the corner and I thought while I'm packing up I might as well put a couple of rods back out on the spots I have been fishing and uh, yeah this was in about, <laughs> about five minutes and we're playing another fish crazy all that time nothing no bites just a recast with a solid bag five minutes later it's gone off 
want to get under there, don't you? I know you want to. Not allowed. Out of the bush. I know you want to be in the bush. We all want to be in a bush. No one wants to be in the bush, do they really? Stop talking about bush. This time, here he is, he's done. No, he's not. Right, this time. This time, get okay, right. This time. And he's in. Yes. Well, in little more than a blink of an eye, this session has gone from looking like a blank to two fish on the bank in little more than five minutes. And it has been tough going, this session. It really has. I mean, this is a very popular day ticket fishery. And like a lot of popular day ticket waters, it's, it's full every day of the week with anglers. And by the time you get to this time of the year, the back end of summer, these fish have been subject to a lot of angling pressure and that, that pressure does take its toll and when you get to this stage in the year they can become a lot cuter a lot trickier to catch and i do think that the pva bags the solid pva bags have given me a bit of an advantage when it has definitely been very tough going so as promised it is competition time and you could win a pva bundle with all the essential items i've used in this video so the rapid bag system the leads hook link hooks etc and all you have to do to stand a chance of winning is subscribe to the fox youtube channel and answer this fairly simple question what was the name of the alarms i've used in this video now i've not actually mentioned it so you might have to do a little bit of research Pop your answer in the comments section below and we'll announce a winner very soon. Well, that is the end of my 18 hour session at East Elf Lakes. And it has been surprisingly really tough going. So to get two fish right at the end like that feels quite rewarding. And hopefully I've highlighted that by using solid PVA bags in the right situations, it really can turn a session around. But that is it from me for now. Remember to subscribe to the Fox YouTube channel. And if you are entering the competition, then put your answers in the comment section below and good luck to everyone who's entering.